All right, good day, everybody. This is E. Marcel Pertooth, and welcome to another edition of the Fighting Peaches. In this edition, we're going to preview Georgia State's upcoming home contest against Georgia Southern in the conference opener for uh, both teams. Uh, before we get to that, as always, to follow everything that we do, head to the mothership, the sportsinquire.net, premier site for news and notes in the world of sports. You can also go to our social media platforms on Twitter, slash X, Instagram, and Facebook. Just look us up under Etienne Marcel Pertut or E. Marcel Pertut or Sports Inquirer, and you'll be able to find us. And finally, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our audio and video host. And that include YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and more. As I mentioned, uh, Georgia State uh, football is preparing to host Georgia Southern on September 28th. Hopefully the rain co- leaves. Right now we're recording this on September 26th, and the storm is coming to us here in metro atlanta obviously florida is about to get hit pretty hard in the next 24 hours as well uh, but the, the rain should pass by the time the game takes place later on uh, this week but the panthers are coming off of a home victory over vanderbilt in sec foe and they had a bye week and they are now back in practice uh, getting ready for georgia southern we're going to start with audio from Head coach Dell McGee, as well as players uh, Xavier Robinson and Jordan Ford. Uh, first, we'll hear from uh, head coach Dell McGee, and then from uh, running back Jordan Ford, and then lastly, linebacker uh, Xavier Robinson. So we'll get to all of them throughout this edition of the show. Let's go ahead and get started uh, with Dell McGee and his thoughts on the practices this week and the Panthers preparing to host their in state rival. Enjoy. Going up today, and we are typical Tuesday practice. I thought our kids really answered the bell from yesterday's practice. We didn't practice very well yesterday, and our leadership really showed up, and our kids had a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, coaches had a lot of energy, which is to be expected, and um, I just really appreciate our team for responding to having a bad practice to turn this practice into one of our best that we've had this year. It's going to take a team effort in all three phases. Southern poses a lot of different issues on both sides of the ball. They're very well coached. They play extremely hard um, offensively. They uh, make you defend the entire field. Uh, they love their bows and screen game and quick game in the, in the passing game. And, and they got very serviceable, serviceable running backs. Uh, they got a big pounder. And they also got two smaller guys that are, they run like pounders, but they also add value in the passing game. Uh, and the O-line is, is very stout. They're, they're doing a good job. And they played two really tough opponents in Georgia State and Ole Miss. So statistically, things may not look uh, like they have a very good defense, but, but they really do. Uh, they really fly around. And we talk about Ole Miss being one of the top teams in the country and how they competed and, and um, were in the, that were in the game on the road that speaks volumes on their preparation and we got our work cut out for us uh, from that standpoint. So um, they bring a lot of pressure, um, change up their looks. You can, you can really see that they're dialed into the scheme that they're running and they got a very good check system, uh, much much in check on offense. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and open up for questions. Obviously you've got the UConn game later in the season, but if you can call the first three games the non-con portion of the schedule, what what have you learned about your team? Um, they're very resilient. Um, you can kind of see the leadership and just the connection that we've been preaching um, from spring ball through summer camp through fall camp and how that kind of has transpired. They really, there's, there's a group that really uh, listens. Um, they really accept challenges. You can certain guys got kind of the pulse of the team and. and uh, the rest of the guys that are kind of learning, they're, they're really responding to those leaders on our team. So just proud of the growth that we've had. We're still a team in, in progress from a growth standpoint, but we're still not where we need to be from a schematic standpoint in all three phases. We we'll continue to build our foundation from that standpoint, but um, you know, we're just continuing to grow. But I can say that our team is very connected and they love each other and they play very, very hard. You mentioned over here, Coach, 
you mentioned in the, the, <clears throat> the teleconference and the, the teleconference for the Sun Belt yesterday about Southern having maybe better conditioning coming off of a game, that Ole Miss game, you guys coming off of a bye. Uh, how do you like compensate for that with these week of practices uh, coming off of the bye and uh, getting ready for the game on Saturday? Yeah, we really tried to attack it last week with a lot more conditioning last week. And, um, and then just how we practice this week as far as the, the game speed, practice speed, making sure that we're transitioning from drill to drill, uh, covering down offensive and defensive lines, come out the stack. So just how we practice the rest of this week is very important to get back a little bit of that game conditioning. You really can't really get that back. So it's always that first series is going to feel like, oh, my goodness. We're back to playing, and then after that, they'll settle down. And uh, you know, the weather's going to be nice. It's not going to be really, it's not going to be really hot. Hopefully, the hurricane will get on up out of here, and we'll have a great day in football. And you mentioned having to buy, allow some players to get healthier. Uh, just a status update, guys like Justin Abraham and some other guys that were have been dinged up over these past few weeks, and their status for Saturday. Yeah, I'm very encouraged about today. Um, IG is a another one. Um, they look like they'll be ready. Saturday, so I um, just got to make sure we finish the right way and continue to get treatment and maximize our recovery. But uh, Justin and Ivy should be back. To what percent? I'm not sure, but they were out today and they're starting to spots. You said that this Monday practice wasn't great. Houston one was today was much better. Was that a coach thing? Did you guys have to grab them, or did the players, the leaders, kind of police themselves, like you talked about? And yeah, well, I challenged our leadership group after practice <coughs> yesterday, and like I said, they responded and they got the message across to the rest of the team. So I'm proud of those guys for getting the, the team working in the right direction, and we had the right type of practice today. You watched the game with the team. Did the guys <coughs> watch the game last week, Georgia Southern's game, together? Oh, no, they were off. So some guys went home. Um, some guys were good. Watch it together. But, you know, we're watching it as the week progresses, and it's just not that game. They got <clears throat> the numerous games on the slate that, you know, like I said, they pose a lot of different problems. They're very sound, well coached, and they got a lot of staff cohesion. So, you know, they understand exactly what we're doing in all three phases, and we gotta make sure that we're on top of our game in all three phases. Went back with the injuries last game, so you had Isaiah go out for the bowl game. You had Alex Johnson and Houston. You had Shams and Mason. It's always an X-Man mentality, but there's no guarantee that they see the moment. It feels like they kind of did last night. Yeah, that's, that's really yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, we got an X-Man up mentality, and you know, that's why we practice the way we do. We want to make sure we're developing our entire roster because we don't have a crystal ball, and we can't predict the future when the guys go down. So we're not going to create any excuses. Uh, I feel like all of our <coughs> twos and threes get ample work uh, from a physical and mental standpoint. So. It's just like scenarios in the game. We cover a lot of different scenarios that we may not practice, but we mentally go over things through film study. And sometimes you gotta bring that situation back to fruition and uh, execute it without actually doing a physical rep of that situation. So, you know, just proud of our guys for those guys that stepped up in that game to uh, play to their potential. And, you know, they still have some things out there. And, you know, we're still a work in progress, like I said, but I'm proud of where we are right now. And I'm just really excited for the opportunity to play in this game. Coach, so can you take us behind the scenes and tell what this bye week was like for you? Like behind the scenes, like what's your family doing with the downtime? How did you handle it? Uh, we really, really wasn't a whole lot of downtime. <laughs> um, like I said, we was working on our entire roster and working on ourselves. And, uh, I went out recruiting Thursday, Friday, got back Saturday morning. So uh, our entire staff out in Fort Lauderdale, Miami this weekend at two games. And <coughs> saw some of our commits uh, down in South Florida. And all of our coach around the world Thursday, Friday, uh, basically. So uh, not so much family time. I watched football all day Saturday. Got a chance to get a nap, yes. which was much needed. And I uh, went back to work on Sunday. So just. Typical times right now, and my son, uh, he went home. He didn't want me to come home. He wanted to spend some time with his mom, so that allowed me to kind of take a nap and just watch football. Otherwise, I'd have been with dinner, so yeah. it, was, it was good for me. So with the announcement that the game was going to be changing from 
money they hate, two of the things we all vote for them. Um, can you give us your commentary on how you feel about that change? Uh, I think it's a wonderful change. I don't know about the you know the hate part of it, but uh, just having it feel you know Trump will be involved with the game and someone's gonna have bragging rights for 364 days. Uh, so I think it's a, a great thing for the city of Atlanta, for both universities, and you know that decision to change the game is definitely an administrative decision, and you know, I support both uh, administrations for for making this happen. In the practice today, you can't hear, help but hear you on the PA uh, system. Uh, where did that technique come from as far as you being on the PA? Because uh, I don't think I've been to many practices, I don't think I've seen it uh, in that, that approach from the head coach. Uh, where did that come from and how benefit? How did you come to use that approach? Well, the last nine years I've heard the microphone at uh, the place I worked at last with Coach Smart. I would say that I'm not as animated uh, or aggressive on the microphone, microphone as, as my former boss, but uh, it, it serves its purpose. It's more so just make sure we're organized, make sure you're reemphasizing the things that need to be reemphasized. So um, those are great times at Georgia, uh, listening to Coach Smart on that microphone. Uh, I could write a book about some some messages, uh, very entertaining stuff, but unless you were on the, the bad end of that microphone. So he didn't he didn't hold anything back from players, coaches, or anything, but uh, much love to Coach Mark with the mic. Do you have to watch yourself in your language and maybe your tone? Because no, it, it, it's I'm, out there. No, I'm not a language guy. I try not to curse, you know. I try not to. I try to make sure the message is, is right, but, you know, you can't, the players can't confuse the message with the tone, so. The tone is, is the message or the tone setter, but it's not the words that's coming out. It's really the tone of the message. And I want the kids understand and the coaches understand that part of it. And I think everyone kind of can rise. Uh, and that was uh, head coach of Georgia State Football, Del McGee, uh, discussing and previewing uh, the Georgia Southern contest coming up this week. Uh, next up is going to be running back Jordan Ford and him about talking about joining the team, transferring into the Panthers, and what's it like being part of the running back group. Here is Jordan. You can be on and off the field. That's all we do. <laughs> Freddie was coming back. The other, you and the other guys transferred in. Mm -hmm. It could have been easy for any of you to be like, I want to come in and be like the guy. But right. It seems like you've all got bought into the idea of the rotation mm -hmm. committee. And what, what's that been like? I mean, all of us good. We can do the same thing. Uh, and it's just like not being selfish. Um, it's one team, one goal. So uh, if we can all do it together, it's better. Everybody eats. So if we have it like that, other than this one person eating, uh, Freddie always say uh, he's been that person that'd be behind somebody that take 30 carries before him. And um, he don't want nobody else to feel like that, which I feel him. So um, just us being together, just doing it together, it's, it's just best for all of us. Has it been a surprise? Anything that has surprised you? No, no, not really. Not, not no. no surprises. Um, I just feel like we're a great team. We uh, stick together. We just do what we got to do to get the dub. What have you discovered about your teammates these first three games? Just the camaraderie around us, man. Yeah. Like we get closer and closer every game. You know what I'm saying? We don't fold under pressure. Um, when things get tough, we still fight through. We keep each other up on the sideline. Keep each other up in practice, and that just make us play harder. That's all I, I noticed about this team. We got a real gritty team, and they want to win. So that's the biggest thing I noticed about our team. Glad to see Sunbelt Conference play finally getting around to starting. Absolutely. Say that again. Are you glad to see the conference play? Absolutely. 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 We got Georgia Southern first uh, big rivalry game. Um, uh, just another game we got to take to get our ultimate goal. Are you familiar with the rivalry very much at all? Uh, I've heard about it. Uh, I'm, I heard about it from the team that from the teammates that was already here. Uh, it's a big game, um, but you know, coach always tell us next moment is the next moment. So we just take it as a moment. We got to get through to get to our ultimate goal. You came from Garden City, you know, to uh, Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Talk about just the bumps along the grind. Like you're a grinder, really, at the core. Absolutely. And talking about like your relationship with the other running backs. Do you see like yourself in a mirror when you look at? based on your journey and what you've been through? 
Um, you know, uh, all our journey's different. So, uh, but I know we it hasn't been smooth for every running back. So yeah, I, I kind of see that in every running back. But uh, like I said, our journeys are different. Uh, I came from JUCO. Um, I don't think uh, some. I think I'm the only running back that came from JUCO. So I kind of had this different uh, scene in it. So um, yeah, I, I, I do see myself in other ones because they they still like like Freddie. He was he was he wanted to play last year, but uh, you say you had Marcus in front of him taking 30 carries a game. So. That's kind of a struggle that he had, uh, and I had the same struggle, you know what I'm saying, coming through JUCO. Um, but seeing myself uh, in them in the mirror, yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach mentioned today was a really good practice, and maybe yesterday was less good. Did you feel that today, that you guys brought the energy you needed? Absolutely. Really, it's that scout team. That scout team brought it from the time we stepped on the field to the time we all, that scout team make us go. They make us get up. They make us just practice harder. They talking, they chirping, they doing everything to just get us going. So just uh, when, we, when we come to the game, it's nothing new. All right, and that was Jordan Ford running back for uh, Georgia State. He's found himself in the rotation, getting a lot more carries and being a big contributor to the Panthers offense. Let's switch over to, over to the other side of the ball and uh, linebacker Xavier Robinson and his thoughts on preparing for Georgia Southern and the team overall. Uh, let's hear from Xavier. Uh, it's, it's, it's truly been a blessing. Uh, I tell people all the time, like, I'm very thankful for this opportunity. You know, coming from my, uh, you know, my background, uh, I'm just very thankful to be here. Um, like I said, uh, I'm just so grateful to be here. How did that go? How was? How did you arrive here? So, uh, just just hard work and effort. You know, um, that's one thing that I'm about. That's one of my morals is just working hard, proving myself, and that's really been paying off for me at the end of the day. What did you like about Georgia State? It's home. You know, I feel like home because I'm, I'm from here. So, um, you know, closer to my family, and uh, I got a lot of support here as well. What's it like being in a linebacker room? Um, it's just like a bunch of dogs. Man, it's 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 nothing but love. You know, uh, we got a lot of guys in the linebacker room that is like very talented, and they push me pretty much every day. And I'm I'm so thankful for them because without them, you know, uh, I wouldn't be getting better each and every day. How do you approach the bye week? Did you did you go home? Did you want to stay on campus? How do you approach this week off? I was able to spend time with my family a little bit, but um, more so this week. Well, I'm sorry, last week was more so of. Um, you know, just working on fundamentals, you know, getting my technique right, as well as the team. And, uh, you know, going into this week, just game planning, going into uh, Georgia Southern. What did you take away from your observations of the team, uh, having time to review the first few games, and uh, where do you think the defense is at right now? We got to a good start. Um, like I said, you know, coming up with my week, we was able to focus on that. And now since uh, we are in game plan, you know, uh, the execution has been progressing. You know, we've been making uh, a lot of progress and uh, by the time the game day comes, we'll be ready. Coach, let's talk about eye discipline and how important it was against Vanderbilt because of their quarterback on this game. It won't be the same thing this week, but there'll be some of that. How do you describe eye discipline? Uh, eye discipline is just, you know, just looking at the right things at the right times, you know, uh, don't get too caught up in all of the motions and shifts and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, we got something in our in our play, uh, playbook to uh, line up to something. So as long as we just, uh, you know, just communicate as a whole on defense, then we'll be good. That's the key, communication. Yes, sir. You seem to be around the ball a lot. Is that something that's always part of your DNA, or how does that come about? E effort. You know, uh, that's one thing that I told myself I was going to do prior to coming here was just, um, you know, just run to the ball because uh, prior, well, when I first got here, you know, I didn't really know anything, you know, new system. So uh, that was one of that was one of the main things that I graded in me was to, you know, run to the ball no matter what. You did that all the time at West Georgia. Um, I know it was tough being that shorter and not playing, especially with being hurt. And then dealing with like the COVID here, being restricted and everything, but you let them to the first team, all the uh, go, go south. <coughs> and you know how to fly to the ball now, but like Coach talked about, like you're a lot. You can see it all on the film whenever you're playing. 
Like, what is your why? So one of my biggest whys, uh, um, I recently lost my pop. You know, I love him to death. Um, I lost him on um, this past New Year's Eve. Um, that's that's been one of the, the one of my true meanings of my why. My family as well, and it's like, uh, as y'all can tell, you know, what I'm talking about is my family. So I go hard for that. I go hard for my pop. Uh, I remember the first game of the season we played Georgia Tech, man. I, I ain't gonna lie, I was out there, I hit the field, I started crying right. because I was, so, I was so blessed and thankful and who I'm doing it for. And uh, at the end of the game, you know, a lot of my teammates, they came up to me and was like, man, like, I felt your passion out there. So, you know, that's one of my biggest lives. And still to this day, I'm, I'm still going hard for my pop. You know, I love him. Tough guy. You know anybody from the other team you're gonna face, face this weekend? Uh, no, sir. No. Um, we do, we do got an Atlanta native, uh, uh, T, TJ, I believe, uh, you know, familiar. Uh, we was in the same uh, conference, or we was in the same region in high school. Yeah, Todd, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, how is it, Coach Shearer kind of makes turnovers an emphasis for me, but how is it being on a unit that kind of wants to be making those kind of plays all the time? That's one of our biggest things, uh, you know, just getting that ball out, uh, emphasizing. Uh, turnovers because the more turnovers that the more turnovers that we have, the more opportunities we create for offense. So uh, that's one of our biggest um, priorities. That's one of our biggest must going into this week. You know, he definitely emphasized on um, you know shooting at the ball, getting interceptions, you know tips and overthrows. We need those to score the DB. So that's one thing that we've been preaching on this week. What was that like in the Vanderbilt game? You get that very first hit. In the game is a turnover, right? <laughs> the first big break, right? Man, uh, you know, that game, um, it was a big game, you know, uh, uh, upset. You know, uh, I told them guys, man, like, like we can compete with anybody in the conference, no matter who it is, you know. And uh, that's one thing that we did was compete. And uh, once we started getting turnovers, man, we just knew uh, prior to the game as well, like, we had energy. So we knew we knew that, like, as long as we execute, the game is in our hands. Just control what we control. Yeah. Also, you know, they are a good team. Like you, like you mentioned, they have played two uh, big schools, which was um, Ole Miss and uh, Boise State. You know, they're good. Uh, you know, they, they, they gave them a good fight. Uh, just going into this week, um, you know, uh, our emphasis is, you know, stop the run, um, you know, pass as well. You know, just pretty much do our thing, execute the game plan. Uh, they got good guys all across the board, and we do too. we do as well. So, um, you know, as long as we just do our part, then we good. Okay, and we are back, and actually we were able to pull the audio or video and audio of Georgia Southern head coach Clay Helton uh, from this uh, previous Sunbelt teleconference uh, for the football coaches. He discusses the team's loss to Ole Miss in his last contest and preparing for Georgia State. Here is Coach Helton. played one of the better football teams uh, in the country, and uh, they lived up to expectation. Uh, they played extremely well with a good quarterback, good group of receivers. Uh, I'm proud of the kids, our kids, of how hard they fought um, and proud of, you know, their work ethic and prep that they put into the game. Um, I thought, uh, you know, being able to get down to two scores early off the turn, early turnover hurt us, kind of caught our breath and got it, got that early touchdown. I uh, was able to get a surprise on side. Uh, but then, you know, we had some critical errors, some two holding calls that got us out of the red zone uh, that could have cut it to a one score game early. Uh, and then uh, some uh, coverage assignment busts that, uh, you know, you do that against Jackson Dart, uh, he's going to make you pay. And he did. And all of a sudden you look up, it's 24-7 at halftime, and then you get to the second half, and uh, their talent really shined uh, in the second half. Now we got a great opportunity uh, to travel up to Atlanta to play a really good Georgia State team um, who's coming off a big win uh, against an SEC opponent in Bandy. Uh, they played really physical uh, against Georgia Tech. He won a close one and showed their poise against Chattanooga and then showed their poise again late um, over that win versus uh, Bandy. Uh, so I've always had a lot of respect for Coach McGee and a lot of respect for his staff. Uh, he's got uh, a bunch of newcomers, I think 48 newcomers, that he's really uh, put in his, his culture and you can see it. 
kids are getting better with each and every game. Uh, I'm really excited about the Georgia Grown Bowl. I appreciate that partnership. I think it's going to bring even more excitement to the game, and we're looking forward to going uh, up to Atlanta on Saturday. Appreciate that. We'll uh, start with Luke Creasy. Luke? Hey, Coach. W when you're playing, you know, some of the best talent in the country, you know, Marshall was kind of in the same spot, you know, played tight for a little bit, a couple of mistakes. Um you know, get really magnified in those games. But how much can you learn about um, your guys, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and look at the film, at what you guys did right when you controlled the controllables, you know, in, in a situation like that? Yeah, you, you know, I think this this non-conference slate has really helped our football team. Uh, one with the quality of opponents, uh, quality of opponents when you're playing the Boise State and you're playing the uh, Ole Miss, uh, two tough road trips. Uh, you know, you go out to Nevada and get a big win. Uh, then you go into the style of atmosphere uh, that was in Oxford, Mississippi. I think that's um, really important for your team as they grow going into conference pl play. Uh, I'm hoping that it's prepared us the best uh, to be able to walk into this first matchup, which is a very important game, not only in our conference, uh, but for our fan bases and for our players, you know. So, um, you, you know, you always want those challenges and uh, proud of our kids where they stand right now. I uh, wish we had a couple more wins in the win column. I wish we, wish we would have, uh, you know, won one or two more of those, but we sit here two and two. Uh, I think we've learned a lot of lessons uh, from this tough schedule, and uh, I think it's prepared us to walk into conference. Thank you. We'll go over to Stan Autry. Stan? Stan, you're still on mute. Hey, yeah. Hey, Clay. How are you this morning? Doing well, Stan. You've, you've been involved in a few rivalry things before mm -hmm. in, in California. It's uh, some, some things going on there. How would, now that you've been through the Georgia State, Georgia Southern game a few times, how would you rate this rivalry and what makes it special between these two teams? Yeah, I, I think that any time that you have two teams that are in the same state and you see the importance to the kids of the game, I've been involved, had the honor of being in this game twice now, uh, one on the losing side and one on the winning side. And both times I've just seen the importance to the kids. Um, you know, we've signed 61 high school players uh, in our two years here. Uh, Coach McGee, you look at his recruiting, he's doing the same thing. There's so much talent within this state that you grow up together, you've competed against one another in high school, and now you carry it over to college. It, it is important. And then all of a sudden, you make it the Georgia Grown Bowl, and there's a trophy involved, and it, it just grows, you know, in, in importance. So uh, it, it is an important game. It's the first game of our conference. Uh, it's uh, a game with, you know, another team that's in state that is very important to our fan bases, our universities, and our kids. And, and so, yeah, it, it is elevated. Um, it, it is elevated emotions are elevated and passion is elevated um, because of the opportunity to play somebody within your state it's kind of it's kind of unusual this game usually is later in the season mm -hmm. yeah, yeah this you're, you're right you're right off the bat this time <laughs> yeah it's really early and I, I i credit our coaches that we got in about 6 a.m from oxford mississippi and, and we went right to work on a really good georgia state team uh, that had a bye week so we've got a lot of catching up to do uh you know uh just short uh appearances on tape really impressed of what dell's doing there uh both offensively and defensively and credit to his staff he's brought in some you know really talented staff to be able to lead their organization doing a nice job it's going to make for a great game on saturday Right, we'll Thanks, to Billy. Oh, sorry, Stan. We'll, we'll go over to Billy for one more. Hey, Coach. Uh, Luke kind of hit on this a little bit, but, you know, more specifically towards Georgia State. Um, what do you feel like are some keys that you guys need to win uh, for that game this weekend? Yeah, you know, obviously, I, I think that um, that Dell's done a really good job of presenting his team with great poise, especially the last two games. Uh, I've been really impressed with the, the way they won first Chattanooga, especially defensively. Defense had to win that game on the last drive uh, to be able to get a big turnover uh, in that game in a two-minute drive that Chattanooga was trying to drive down and get a big and big interception. Uh, and then you, you watch um, last, last week's game 
first van do you see the offense now it's their turn to go have a late two minute drive to go win it and do that you know so obviously i think some of the situational mastery things that we all try to do as head coaches really shine through uh dell did a nice job uh you know presenting a really poised team um, you're going to have about five or six of those really close games that can go one way or the other uh, and you know he, he, they put themselves in basically two and oh um, both close games so uh credit to them and their staff and their players for staying voice all right and that was georgia southern uh football head coach uh, Clay Helton, thank you to the Sun Belt Conference for allowing us to record that audio and video content. A very interesting contest coming up. We'll be covering it uh, from from. Uh, we won't be at the game. We will be at some other activities, uh, but we will have a recap of that contest and much more in the world of college football, including the Sun Belt Conference. Thank you for watching and listening to this latest edition of the Fighting Peaches. As always, you can go to us at the mothership, the sports inquired.net. You can also search for us on Twitter slash X, Instagram and Facebook, our social media platforms. And finally, make sure you like, share and subscribe our content on our audio and video host, including YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and more. Once again, this is Etienne Marcel Pertut. And thank you for watching and listening to this latest edition of Fighting Peaches. Until next time, good fight, good night, and be safe.